Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us both today and hopefully you've had some time to join us throughout the week. We really appreciate you making your valuable time and energy in angel flight, uh, learning a little bit more about what we're doing and contributing towards how we can best do it. We greatly appreciate all the feedback that we have from our volunteers. And just so folks know what we do here is we distill all this information. Obviously, we'll make all these recordings available publicly to everyone at Angel Flight. Um, but we take those, distill them, put them into our strategy and tactics on the day-to-day -day basis, um, and then you know measure those and carry it out through the year, and then come back the next year and report on what worked and what didn't work, and try to continually evolve and get better. Um, and so this is a really important time for us, so we really value that feedback. We're really excited. We had over uh, 200 attendees this week, which is the biggest annual retreat we've had. Um, we miss being in the room with you and learning from you, learning about you, uh, breaking bread together. Um, but we're in these extraordinary times excited that we could do so here with you this week. Um, I'm going to just give a couple more minutes for folks to come in. Um, and then we're going, going to, just like we kicked off the meeting, we're going to show uh, a little bit about a patient of ours and their mom and the challenge that they are going through and the difference that Angel Flight has made for them. Um, so I'll just give a couple more minutes for folks to come in and then we'll go ahead and get that started. So welcome those who are joining. We're just starting um, our recap session. Thank you so much for your time and energy this week. We're going to condense all those thoughts. But before that, I just wanted to return us to our mission and share this quick story of Jacob and his mom and their journey with Angel Flight. Heart transplant isn't something that lasts forever. He may have two or three more heart transplants in his lifetime. It's a Band-Aid for hopefully better, longer quality of life than he had before. Even my mother asked me today, she said, well, eventually will he not have appointments? I said, oh no, he'll have appointments the rest of his life. Angel Flight says, been my biggest lifesaver. I hope they know how appreciative and how grateful I am for everything that they've done. So on, on behalf of Kim and Jacob, who you're about to see, we just want to thank you again for volunteering with Angel Flight, for being interested and for helping us this week. Uh, I want us to hear a little bit from Jacob and then we'll get started with the rest as well. Sick. I love going to the hospital. It's like kind of my home away from home. But when I have to drive, it sucks because when I get there, I'm all worn out. That's why I really like Angel Flights because they save so much time. The pilots there are so nice. And I just love going in the planes. It's so fun. 
the views are awesome compared to a car. And when you have a heart transplant, you don't say, oh my gosh, I hate this. It's my life now. I have to do it for the rest of my life. So just like we started with thank yous from our angel flight patients, uh, Kim and Jacob wanted me to extend thank you. We've been flying Jacob for quite a while. Uh, and as you heard from his mom, he's got a long journey ahead of him. We're really excited to, to fly alongside of him throughout that process. Uh, and this week and uh, everything that you've done for angel flight helps us to do that. So again, we just wanna say thank you. Um, our board chairman, Rich is here too. Um, the board meeting happened this morning, um, but it's always a big part of the organization, this strategy from, from our board of directors and our volunteers. Uh, and so I wanted uh, Rick to, or Rich to have the opportunity uh, to thank you as well. Thank you, Josh. Um, yeah, my name is Rich Conti, and for those of you who don't know me, um, I am the board chair of Angel Flight, and I'm honored to be entering my third and last year as the board chair. It's um, <laughs> been really terrific these last three years working so closely with Josh and, <clears throat> and his team to push forward on the mission of Angel Flight. I've been involved with the organization since um, 1996. So um, my, my roots go back to earlier years <clears throat> and it's been really gratifying to see how far the uh, organization has come and uh, Josh's leadership in the last, uh, uh, what is it Josh, since uh, 2014, I think? Um, <clears throat> has really ushered in uh, uh, an era of growth and the ability to expand our mission footprint and our services uh, to meet the mission. So <clears throat> I've been honored to be associated with that, but I wanted to start off by adding my thanks to Josh's thanks. Really, it's really down to the volunteers, whether it's pilots or people who are earth angels or people who are donors, people who are administrative volunteers, However you serve Angel Flight, it really is the volunteers that kind of activate this organization and allow it to do what it is we set out to do. So I, I thank you for everything you do for Angel Flight and particularly thank you for being involved in uh, this week's sessions. As Josh mentioned, the annual retreat is one of our most important times to kind of gather all of our volunteers together, tap into people's expertise, their thoughts, their ideas, help those <clears throat> seed new approaches uh, to how it is we, we deliver our services. And every year we take away some set of insights, some set of uh, ideas that gives us new paths forward. And uh, this year was no exception to that. It was an exception in many other ways, given the nature of the, uh, the COVID virus and the impact that it has on everything that we do. Um, it was interesting to me because when we first started to think about <clears throat> how we would have the retreat this year, we still had in our minds that we would do it in person, we'd all be together, but that quickly became a non-option. And so all of us had in our minds, you know, a question around, geez, if we do this on a virtual platform, what kind of interest are we going to get? What kind of participation are we going to get? How would we even manage, um, you know, the scheduling, uh, the platforms, and I'm just amazed, frankly, at what Josh and Sherry and the rest of the team and all the volunteers who have supported this have been able to do with this virtual uh, annual retreat. As Josh mentioned, we've had record attendance. The scheduling was incredible on a day-to-day -day basis. The cadence of activities, the content for each of the uh, sessions was terrific. I wasn't able to attend all the sessions, actually was only able to attend a few, unfortunately, but I've seen a lot of the content. And it's really amazed me how this whole thing came together with the efforts of the staffs, the staff and the volunteers, as I mentioned, so much so that uh, I think we've all concluded that as we move forward, even when we get back to being able to do all of this in person, we're going to want to have a virtual component to it as well, because that just sort of expands our footprint, our ability to gather in ideas, and it dials up by at least a few notches the participation that remote people can have in the, uh, in the annual retreat. We used to do it by conference call, but now we kind of have a whole new 
protocol and approach to doing it with uh, video type conference calls on the Zoom platform, Teams, and whatever all else people might be using. So I think it's going to become a, you know, a, a, a cornerstone to all of the things that we do into the future. So we expand the number of people that can be involved. Um, the only other thing I would say is that, uh, you know, we've, we've come through a very, very challenging year in 2020 and under the uh, leadership of Josh and his team uh, with support from our board members, I will say, um, we've been able to come through that uh, very difficult time very successfully. The organization has emerged at least as strong uh, as it was when it went into 2020. We feel like coming out of this annual retreat, we are staged for a really strong 2021. We don't know if we'll get back to the pre-COVID kinds of uh, operational tempo, but uh, we're going to make significant progress towards doing that. And we will continue to provide the services that we do to our communities. As Josh likes to say, Josh, I may not get this exactly right, but uh, removing transportation as a barrier to medical treatment. That's a, a core pillar of what it is we try to do. And we will return to a lot of that in 2021 thanks to, in part anyway, to the efforts that uh, you have all made during this week. So Josh, I'll end it there with a thank you to you and the staff and all of our uh, volunteers and uh, look forward to this wrap up. Thanks Rich, really appreciate it. Thank you. And, uh, you know, just glancing over here, I mentioned 200, 200 unique, unique users to our retreat, but I'm seeing so many familiar names that have come to multiple. Uh, I know that I've been in every one of these. <laughs> so I apologize if you have an email sitting in my inbox. Uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of work for the whole team. So I'm gonna extend kudos to the team too. And kudos to all, all the folks here that I'm seeing that have been in so many of these sessions. We've received really great feedback both online and offline, and would welcome that continued feedback. In fact, at the end of this session, we're going to ask you to contribute, you know, the, your biggest lessons learned this week to help us and inform us, and also some stuff that you wish you would, might have seen. Um, so start thinking of those as we go through the rest of this. The other big part of our, our in-person annual retreats uh, is we really like to recognize our volunteers that have gone above and beyond. And yes, I'm paying lip service to that, uh, but I'm gonna turn it over to Sherry uh, for her to recap kind of what the ops team has learned here, but also highlight some of our top volunteers in all of our different wings. So take it away, Sherry. Thanks, Josh. So it has been a great week. Uh, with the participation has been wonderful amongst pilots and we've gotten some great feedback. Uh, so uh, Tuesday we did a, a a run through of what it's like to take a mission in from beginning to end. So how the coordinators work with the new requesting agency or passenger, how it gets out to the pilots and then what the pilots do. We got a lot of feedback from them. Uh, also on Tuesday, we did a, a brief uh, presentation of the new waiver process and all of these things are available uh, by the recordings. And I believe at some point, if she's not already, Henny will put them in the chat there for you. Uh, we also did a, a talk about the COVID procedures that we've been using to keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. We got good feedback there. And then Wednesday and Thursday uh, essentially was, we wanted to hear from you as pilots how we can help you. I'm not gonna go into all of the reasons because that would take too long, but uh, there were suggestions about allowing pilots to see both the ground legs and the air legs for an entire round trip mission. Uh, ways to ask for backup pilots, uh, ways for pilots with big iron to take more than one leg, to take all three legs in one click instead of having to do it multiple times, uh, better personalization to pilots, uh, formatting the mission email today uh, better or differently, uh, making some kind of gifts for first time flyers and taking special care for first time flyers. And we're talking about the passengers there. Um, so those are just a few of the great ideas that came in uh, over the, the week. We will be taking all of those and we'll be looking for the actionable items. We took great notes. We had many of our staff scribing for us during the week. So we've got notes on everything that happened. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank my team. Uh, this goes true for the whole entire AFW team, but special shout out to my team, 
to Anne and Isabel and John and Alejandro and Dana. Uh, they really uh, work their tails off to try and make a good presentation for you while still continuing to run Mission Ops. So kudos to them. Uh, now what we'd like to do is send a great big thank you out to our volunteers. Those are the people who make this all happen. So I'm gonna share with you uh, right now our volunteers of the year for 2020. So uh, we put this together. So we, we put the top three flyers in uh, every wing. And then at the end of the presentation, we're going to give a shout out to our earth angels. We didn't do them by wing because unfortunately there aren't a lot of earth angels in all of the wings. And additionally, uh, because of COVID, the earth angel program was hit particularly hard this year as far as participation. Uh, many of our, our Earth Angel volunteers are retired personnel, putting them in that vulnerable age bracket. So we, um, we did a lot of ground transportation with Uber and Lyft uh, during the COVID crisis. And we hope that soon once vaccines start going, they'll be able to be doing more work. So for Arizona, the top flyers are Dennis Phelan with 38 missions. Steve and Bob Cohillenar with 35 missions, Pierre Ferrandi with 11 missions. Northern California, Chris Bennett, 68 missions. Daniel Wenbeck with 16 missions, Michael Buck with 14 missions. In Southern California, Mark Cannon with 20 missions, Pete Bernardin, with 18 missions. Pete is a longtime flyer and has recently hung up his wings. So kudos to Pete, we'll miss him. Uh, Stephen McGilvery with 17 missions. In Colorado, we have Joseph Dowdy with 16 missions and James Dugan and Costa Constantine with 10 missions each. And then in Hawaii, where we don't have a lot of missions going and because of some of the strict rules, we did many of our flights in 2020 with Mokalele, but David Sacco with seven missions, Jeremy Leonard with six missions and Ace Ellenwood with four missions. Oh, don't hang up on me now, please. Okay. Sorry guys, I seem to be hung up here. Let's see if I can do it this way. Nope, okay. In, uh, sorry, Idaho, we have Rick Holloway with 26 flights, David Taylor with 13 flights and Jeff Miller with 14 flights. In Montana, Michael Burks with 72 flights and James New and Bill Bain with eight flights each. In Nevada, Mike Evans with 55 flights, Bob Malstrom with 27 flights and Sean Oswald with 19 flights. Quick note about that. Some of these pilots may have an overlap. They belong to two wings. Um, so uh, their counts, Bob Malstrom counts may be in Nevada and Washington. So just a Kind of a note for you. In Oregon, Johannes Weiss and Ethan Levi with 20 flights each, Glenn Dahl with 14 flights. In Utah, Mike Valentine, 38 missions, Lou Rossi, 14, Mark Miller, 17. In Washington, John Jewett with 50 missions. Fred Klarmeyer with 12 missions and John Paulson with 11 missions. And in Wyoming, we had Matt Young with seven missions, Tom Van Cleef with six missions and John Larson and Kent Mazzi with two missions each. That gives us the top flyers for 2020. Right there are Michael Burks with 72 missions, Chris Bennett with 68, Mike Evans with 55, 
John Jewett with 50 and Mike Valentine with 39 missions. So a quick round of applause for all of our top flyers for 2020. Sherry, I know uh, at least Mike is on the attendance list here um, and I'm gonna totally put you on this spot, Mike, but um, would you be willing to uh, share with us a little bit what those 72 missions meant to you? Kenny, can we unmute Michael Burks? I think it's Burke family in the attendee list. I think that's a different Burke. Oh, Maybe it is? not. I believe so. Yep, sorry, different Burke. Oh, there. Oh, Michael just said right there, CPU is being stubborn, so he's going to type it in. This is good. Real time, real time challenges. Well, while Michael's typing it in, I'll just say thank you. Uh, Michael, uh, in Montana specifically, it's a really challenging spot for our coordinators to fill flights. Unfortunately, not a lot of great health care, and so a lot of travel needs and pretty long distances um, and not as many pilots, let's say, as a, a major urban city like Seattle or LA or San Francisco. So Mike has, uh, for a number of years now, has done a lion's share of the heavy lifting there. And uh, I know the coordination team really appreciates it as as all the families that help. Uh, Mike Michael says, I just love what I do and love how many more pilots we have in Montana. I think we've recruited 18 or 19 new ones. So that's the other thing Michael is. He always is preaching the angel flight gospel. Uh, and as wing leader up there, he's he's been able to really grow um, the base there, which has been a much needed component for the patient community in Montana. So uh, Michael and all the top flyers, um, and drivers in Angel Flight. Thank you so much. Um, Mike, Michael is also, uh, we, we actually saw at last year's annual retreat, he is uh, with some other connections filming an Angel Flight movie um, that's set to release at the end of this year. So we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and also that the Jacob and, and Kim movie is, uh, will be coming out later this year too. So we'll save it, um, save with everybody. And then Mike just put the uh, comment in the chat or the link in the chats for the film for those that are interested. So thank you again. Sorry, Sherry, didn't mean to hijack. I just wanted to make sure if folks were on the line, they had the opportunity to be recognized. That's quite all right. Uh, oh no, sorry, sorry. Okay, let me, uh, a big shout out to our Earth Angels uh, they do a, an amazing job. If you were in any of the sessions about mission ops, you know how important the ground transportation is for our passengers. Many people will not be able to go to their medical treatment without help getting ground transportation. Uh, for those of you that live in some of the bigger urban areas, you know that getting a, an Uber or a Lyft from uh, some of the airports into the medical centers can run you know, anywhere from $15, $20, upwards of $60, $75 one way. And so it's just not feasible for some of these people. So the Earth Angels are a critical part and we are looking forward uh, to 2021 to be able to hire an Earth Angel coordinator due to the Hilton grant and uh, really strengthen and bump up our program. So I just want to uh, mention these top Earth Angels in 2020. And as I said, many of them didn't drive uh, once things started to shut down last March. Uh, Karen Arden with 49 mission legs, and I need to give a special shout out to her. Karen probably uh, drove many more and organized many more ground legs with just volunteers of people she knew in our With Love From Strangers flight. So uh, many times, uh, the pilots were based at Salt Lake City Airport, uh, the big Salt Lake City Airport, and the missions were going out of U-42, the smaller airport there in Utah, in Salt Lake City area. And so Karen would get drivers, either herself or other family members or friends, to go and fill up their cars at U-42 and drive them to Salt Lake to meet the pilots. So big kudos to her for all of her work there. Uh, Dennis Phelan, who you saw was the top Earth Angel or the top pilot in Arizona, also uh, drove 32 of the legs. So he drove 
uh, many of the Earth Angel legs when he was the command pilot. But additionally, he drove legs when his plane was in annual or had a mechanical problem um, or he just couldn't fly. He took the ground legs to help out on that respect. Terry Henry, 26 legs. Jacqueline Bailey, 18. Liza Jensen, 17. Margot Bernal, 16. Flavio Cle Ch Chibanu, 16. Kevin Dennis, 13. Stephen Bobco Hillenar, again, a top flyer with 12. He drove many of them, especially in Santa Monica. He'd fly in, drive a patient, and then wait for him and drive him back. Tom Pinnett for 11. Rich Pickett, our safety officer, drove nine legs. Kiyomi Burks, uh, Michael Burke's wife in Montana, drove nine legs. And Jesse Wallace uh, drove eight legs in San Diego area. So kudos to all of these people. Uh, the volunteers are what make this all happen. You heard it uh, from Jacob and his mom, how important they are to everybody. And I thank you, thank you so much. Thanks, Sherry, and thanks to all of our volunteers. I'll pause here too um, and thank any pilot that decided for personal or family safety reasons not to fly too. Uh, we know how hard of a choice that is to make uh, and want to reward you for that. There, there were no wrong things to do uh, during the pandemic. Um, and so we just want to thank everyone for making that choice responsibly for themselves and their families. Okay, um, so Sherry just recapped um, operations. So thank you, Sherry. Uh, Ivan, uh, you want to recap? your highlights and lessons learned from outreach this week? Oops. Yes, I do. Sorry, I'm having some computer issues. So if I cut off, I just apologize ahead of time. Um, so uh, first I wanna give my thanks to everyone for joining us this week. Uh, I think I learned a lot more uh, than I you know, have, could have hoped for. Um, to hear from everyone really uh, is inspiring. Uh, it really teaches us a lot uh, going forward into the new year. Um, so yeah, just wanna echo, uh, you know, Josh and Sherry's thoughts and, and thank all of you for, for that. Um, uh, so our first session on Tuesday was a session on a general overview of outreach. Um, we had a lot of new volunteers who wanted to know what exactly we do for outreach. And so that's what we covered. Uh, and then <clears throat> we had Kathleen uh, share a little bit on the connection between grants and outreach. Uh, and then Jeff Morehouse, our SoCal wing leader and uh, command pilot uh, share uh, his experience, his tips and his uh, um, insight into outreach that he's done in Southern California. Um, which I think brought up a lot of light bulbs for people uh, in that session. Um, since then, uh, I've received several emails with uh, a lot of interest to get involved. So thank you for all of all of you who who have emailed uh, uh, to to help out. Um, love to see new hands. People a lot smarter than I am. So uh, looking forward to working with you uh, and care and moving outreach forward. Uh, we've got some ag aggressive outreach goals uh, this year. And so, uh, yeah, we've, we've got some, some work to do. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, and then our second session uh, was a, a in-service and leads a tutorial session on how we go about building leads, following up, and then uh, finally doing an in-service for a group or for, uh, for a hospital. Um, so, although we're still in COVID times, um, we're, you know, we expect to return to doing face-to-face -face presentations at, uh, sooner than later. Uh, we carry on doing virtual presentations. Um, and so, uh, we had a good turnout for that session. Uh, and again, just, uh, some new ideas, um, some great questions, uh, and suggestions on how to improve our methods. Um, we love to hear that, uh, you know, any new suggestions uh, are welcomed. Um, we learn a lot more from 
from you, I think, than, 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 you know, I, than we can teach you. So um, the more ideas you can give us, you know, the better. Uh, so it's been a great week, um, uh, a lot to take back and to review and uh, action items to, to put forth. Uh, and um, yeah, just uh, wanted to thank everyone again and um, hopefully, you know, next year we can do this in person. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, Ivan. Great job. Great job. For those two that uh, are waiting, uh, I forgot to tell you at the beginning, we're also drawing our winners of the Alaska Airlines tickets uh, at the close of this session. Uh, and it's going to be very dramatic. You should stay tuned. Think of like the Price is Right meets the Wheel of Fortune, and you'll you'll know you'll know a little bit about what we're going to do. Um, great. Well, now, operations outreach. Let's learn a little bit more about development from Mary. Thanks, Josh. Thank you, everyone, for attending this week. I know it's been a ton of content, but uh, we just can't be more grateful for all of your input. Um, and as all of my colleagues said, learning from you is really, really valuable to us. Um, big thanks to my development team for helping pull everything together to report as well. And um, we're just, we're just really grateful overall. So big, big thanks. But um, in our sessions, we went over uh, the review of 2020 results from 2019. Um, if you're able to join, you saw or you heard <laughs> that we um, did a lot better than what was expected. And that's also um, a big thanks to all of our volunteers and all of our supporters for continuing to support us um, through this very challenging year. Uh, we also did a brief session on our stocks take flight program, which um, just went through the different benefits and different opportunities to give, as well as our planned giving legacy wing program that we're looking to grow in the coming years to sustain AFW's um, long time and future. And um, we also, of course, mentioned our biggest fundraiser Endeavor Awards that we are taking virtual this year. So that'll be on June 10th. Thanks, Henny. Um, definitely mark it in your calendars. Uh, and we hope all of you can attend and share. It is also going to be a free event. So we're really hoping to grow um, the reach and attendees. Um, also, we have committees available if you'd like to learn more and help us get into the weeds with some of these developing um, events and programs. So we have our Endeavor host committee that you're welcome to join. We also hold a golf tournament in the fall. So we have an event planning committee there too. And of course our development committee um, on our board welcomes a lot more uh, ideas. And I think that sums it up. So thank you so much again. Thanks, Mary. And I'll just add, add on to that real quick that came out of that session because a couple of folks emailed me. If you have included Angel Flight in your will or bequest, uh, please let Mary or my, myself know. Um, it accomplished a couple of things. One, we, we want to recognize that. That's a really generous and often the most transformational one-time gift that any of us can give uh, and, and pass on our legacy. But two, um, it really helps the organization long-term for forecasting uh, and a whole host of other things uh, if we have a better idea of what that looks like. Um, so please you know, shoot an email or a phone call to Mary or I and let us know. All right. Uh, great stuff, Mary. Stefan, you want to talk a little bit about the highlights you've learned this week? Yeah, my pleasure. Um, also very grateful for everybody's participation, um, especially in the technology area, which, yeah, yeah, you have to be kind of a particular kind of person to be interested in that. I'm always surprised that there are so many among us that fall into that category. So very glad to have your input and uh, your engagement. Um, a lot of great questions and suggestions on the technology side. We, um, we had a session uh, on the mobile app. So for those of you who are, are still considering using the mobile app for uh, being a pilot or an earth angel, that's recorded. You can kind of get the basic overview of how to use it. And then um, we had a really nice 
kind of focus group where we discussed some of our ideas about upcoming features and um, things that are in development and a lot of great suggestions there. Actually, one of the things that came out of that was the idea to put together kind of a user panel uh, for pilots and, and earth angels, other volunteers who might want to contribute uh, their ideas and feedback on an ongoing basis. So I'll invite anybody who's attending today uh, to send me an email and let me know about that as well. I think uh, it's a very low impact, low commitment kind of thing, uh, the ability to give yourself some, uh, the ability to give us some of your input. And that would be very helpful. And then finally, we heard from a group of master students at, at UC Davis uh, who have been working all year and will continue to work for the rest of their school year uh, on some data science projects that have been super beneficial to the organization. It's the third year that we've been a, a part of this partnership program with uh, UC Davis. And uh, so we've been the beneficiary of this kind of consulting project that they've done for us. And, uh, so we get to hear what their progress is for this year and what their plans are for for wrapping up. So again, my thanks to all of you for participating and uh, in your input and thoughts. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, and Rich Pickett, our safety officer, can join us today. Uh, in addition to serving as our safety officer, he's also a professional pilot, so he's uh, preparing a plane. From, uh, for those of you who saw his safety when he was in Mexico, he's going back to Colorado today. Uh, but he did ask me to, to, to thank me and to thank all who uh, tuned into the safety seminars. Those were among our best, better attended sessions. So hope you found that productive. And I also wanna take the time, uh, including those folks that presented safety seminar, like our, um, our wing safety officers um, and, and others that uh, weren't you know, staff or, or, or board members or whatever that helped with these presentations. Uh, a lot of work went into this. Uh, and so we wanna thank all of them as well. Um, it takes a village to, to pull this off. Uh, and we've been really pleased to see the response that we've um, received back from our volunteers uh, and from our staff. We, what we do now, like I mentioned to start the meeting is we condense this uh, all, the, all the videos, by the way, are up on that website that you want to view. We'll make it available too in different parts of the website applicable to what the content covered was. Um, and then we take this and integrate it into our strategy moving forward. We meet with our, our board committees um, that we create those goals and strategies with and then move forward. Um, so at this time, what we'd like to do is hear from you either by clicking the raised hand button at the bottom and I'll, you, can, you can share with us anything, but I'll, I'll try to give us two, two things food for thought. Maybe one thing uh, that you learned, that you, mo that you were glad you learned this week or through one of the sessions. And then one thing that you think we might be able to consider uh, for our next conference or for future conferences. Um, so you can either type those in the chat or ideally we'd love to hear from you uh, and raise, click that raise hand button at the bottom. Josh, they can also use the Q&A. Oh, great. Q&A too. Any of the buttons will do. <laughs> we'll, we'll get them all. Also, team, did I forget or miss anything? Please feel free to jump in. All right, Jason Petty says, uh, the what you need to know before flying your first mission was a really good session for a beginner that has never flown a mission and asked questions. That's fantastic. Uh, thank you. Yeah, and thanks to Gil, Chris, and Chris for presenting that. Uh, I think it's always great to hear peer to peer. Uh, tax deductions is another one listed here as a useful help. We do get that question a lot, so we'll continue to make that uh, available in our uh, both in our financial section, and we maybe we could link that, Stefan, in AFIDS um, somewhere in the year-end summary so that they could click that and use that as a reference tool. Jake Jacobs has a question in Q&A, Josh. Great. 
Hi, Jake, fellow Merrill Hearst alumni. Uh, excellent Zoom overall, thank you. And that big thanks goes to our staff, specifically Henny, which did the most heavy lifting uh, with the Zoom, but also our moderators, John and uh, Stefan did a great job there too. So thank you for that. Uh, and some suggestions to uh, avoid Zoom fatigue. Maybe we should drop this in the chat for all of our volunteers that are experiencing <laughs> Zoom fatigue right now with us. Uh, I know I've experienced it this week, but I'm really glad we did it this way, even though the rest of my to-do list is way backed up. Uh, so thanks for that, that, Jake. We appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's see. Neville, glad to learn what a well-run organization this is, not only ops, but financially as well. I feel good about volunteering to such a stellar organization. Well, thank you, Neville. I would turn that right back, back around to you. I think we're a stellar organization because we have stellar volunteers. Uh, so thank you for, for choosing Angel Flight to be the nonprofit that you volunteer with and leverage your time, talent, and treasure. John Mahaney. Hi, John. Longtime member. First time caller. Uh, not really. John <laughs> has a general question here. Question, my two-seat Cessna 150 too small for passenger missions? I'm thinking it might be better for cargo and supply flights. Well, I will say yes to both. So you can use, uh, you can actually view one of the tech sessions, maybe Stefan can drop it in the chat, that talks about using filters and the missions available to find single passenger flights that you could fly in a 150. Um, and then similarly, look for those blood flights. John, I know you're in Southern California, but specifically, uh, the live stream blood flights, I think, would be perfect for the 150. You may have to fly out in the desert a little bit to pick up a lot of those, um, but you, you know, they'd be within Southern California and a, and a good opportunity to fly. All right, any other questions? Jim Hassman in the chat. Jim says, Rich's session on stabilized approaches was very informative. He is an excellent addition to a great AFW team. It's been a great week and certainly helped me learn about AFW and how I may be able to contribute. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we're excited to have you in Arizona and in our neck of the woods. Uh, we do a lot of our flight planning through your home base DBT there. So uh, excited to have you too. And for those of you who don't know, Jim is uh, the chairman of Air Care Alliance, which is a, uh, for lack of a better word, a trades group for all the public benefit volunteer pilot organizations across the country. He's doing really great work too to help advance awareness and ability for the community and public to get engaged uh, and use the amazing resources that volunteer pilots and general aviation have. All right, all right, we got our first voice question. Uh, you want to queue up, Eric? Eric, you're on. Hey, Josh. Hey. Uh, yeah, nobody seems to want to speak, so I'll, I'll speak <laughs> up and uh, fulfill your request there. Um, I, I, I would start with a huge congratulations. I mean, I'm relatively new to the organization last year, but uh, you guys pulled off one impressive week here with the sessions and the technology and everything else. So congratulations on that. Um, I think for me, uh, the thing I learned this week was really just how broad the organization is, all the different ways to get involved, uh, whether it's board level committees or the, uh, you know, I just, I just deal with it on the pilot side, but there's so many other aspects to the organization that um, I think it's just great to get the word out. And you think about outreach and we all, I think, walk away from this week knowing that we can recruit people to the organization to do many, many different things, not just uh, you don't have to have a pilot's license to do that. Um, so I think uh, really successful in, you know, the whole week is outreach really just in and of itself. And, uh, and so congratulations on that. I look forward to, to getting involved in uh, other ways in addition to just uh, piloting. Awesome, Eric. Thanks. It's been great to meet you this week too. Uh, and that is one of our goals, right? We, we all see through our own lens, including, you know, including staff, you, you just see it from, your vantage point, and you forget that there's all these different volunteers and users that are affected um, by what we do. And so the better we can, you know, zoom out and use that helicopter view, 
the better that we all can, you know, be in our roles. Uh, and, and when we have, you know, the village approach that we do, that's really important. So I'm glad that to hear that you got that out of that. And that, that, that's our hope that others do. And that's why we're excited. We have a lot of these videos and so forth that we can continue to use as a resource to show folks. So thanks for your feedback and, and for coming. Uh, Ray, uh, not a question, but attending the retreat reminded me how much I've missed it due to COVID. <laughs> you and me both, Ray, this has been a, a great week, but it also makes me miss uh, meeting you, meeting other folks here uh, at Angel Flight. Um, so we are uh, we're excited that there is uh, there's light over the horizon here and we're going to fly towards it. We'll see how many. If, if you've been counting, we're having a, a, a different uh, contest at the end, how many aviation puns we use throughout the week. Uh, it'll be like the Super Bowl <laughs> commercial for Mountain Dew. Yes, <laughs> Mountain Dews you saw, same thing. Um, and then we're going to give the Hilton million dollars to that person. No, I'm just kidding. That would be awful. Hey, Josh, right. before you get to the next one, I just want to let you know, Sam LeBlanc shows there, but it's actually Sandy LeBlanc, and she's one of our patients who has joined the organization as Inner Angel. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Hi, Sandy. I uh, got to meet you earlier this week. Thank you. She says, amazing presentations. I learned the most through the safety sessions. All presenters were terrific. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, Sandy. Really appreciate it. Someone agreed the stabilized approaches was a great session. I'll pass that along to Rich. Thank you. And by the way, um, that is one takeaway that the uh, safety team and committees and wing safety officers took away from this week is that's something we're going to continue to provide throughout the year. Some of these Zoom virtual safety presentations um, seems to translate pretty well and a, a good, easy way to pick up new information. All right, any final questions or should we spin, spin the wheel? All right, so I'll do my best here to do this. Uh, someone can feel free to give me a drum roll while I try to find the right screen share. We should have had that prepared. <laughs> All right, just a reminder, we had a, a raffle uh, throughout the week for two first class tickets on Alaska Airlines anywhere they travel. So all the different people that bought a uh, ticket will be in this wheel. Uh, this is a randomly generated wheel, wheel of names. You can research them if, if you're mad that you lost in a little bit. So I'm gonna click to spin this. You might see people's name multiple times. That just meant they bought multiple raffle tickets. Um, so we're not trying to stack the deck towards any one person. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this wheel a spin. And good luck. Barbara and Victor Bartolome. So the first spin, I, I I, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit more suspense here. The first spin was from High End Shiden Sunglasses. Uh, been a longtime sponsor and very uh, a very great uh, brand. If, if you are a pilot, they're actually among the best uh, sunglasses for pilots. I have some too. So that is going to Barbara and Victor Bartolome. So thank you, Barbara and Victor. And the next spin is for the Alaska Airlines. Is that correct? Mary, give me a nod or something. So I'm not the Bartolomes are also patients. Oh, great. They just got some cool new sunglasses. Yes, they did. All right. And for the Alaska tickets, here we go. Oh, Mark Wolper. Two tickets. I did see him put like $400 in. So he probably had a lot of those names in there. So that's, uh, that's exciting. We'll tell Mark, is Mark on the call? I don't see him on there. Well, great. I just wanna keep spinning the wheel and should we just keep spinning and cheering for whoever it comes up on? Uh, no, I'm starting to get loopy because it's the end of a long week. Uh, so again, thanks to everyone. Thanks to the staff, uh, the board of directors, uh, our volunteers. We're really excited to have you.
And we're excited uh, to get back to doing the great work of Angel Flight uh, for 20, 2021. So um, if there's any other questions, I'll stick around here for a little bit. If there's something you wanted to ask to me or one of the staff members, you know, without being responded to everyone. Um, but in the meantime, have a really great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Enjoy your families. Get vaccinated if you can. Um, we will be working on that too. I guess I should update that. I'll do that. That'll be my final update. Um, so continuing uh, the approach with vaccinations, the coordination team, if we get a expedited vaccination approach, we'll be emailing those wings and the pilots involved in that wings to, to whom that's available. So keep a lookout for those or feel free to email missions team anytime to get updates on where that stands. Um, the other piece, if you want to navigate it yourself, uh, which a lot of our folks are doing, um, we, we are making a letter available signed by me and uh, a chief medical officer at Seattle Children's that serves on our board of directors, advocating for phase one vaccination in your area. So you'll be able to take that letterhead, your badge, uh, any other paperwork you want to try to get vaccinated. Um, and so if that is of your interest and you haven't gotten one of those emails from Sherry, um, I would encourage you to try to navigate your own county because they all have their different requirements. But according to the CDC guidelines, because we deal with volunteer delivery, um, we should be considered in, in phase one for our volunteers. So look for that um, and let us know, you know your level of success and where that was if you do go that route. In the meantime, we'll keep working hard on that. And we are encouraging everyone who can to get vaccinated. Obviously that's a, a personal choice too, um, but we just feel really strongly that it'll help safety for our volunteers and our passengers um, as they try to resume treatments again. So with that said, let me check chats one more time here. Uh, thank you, Jesse, uh, one of our all-star Earth Angels, just expressing her thanks. So I'll pass Jesse's thanks along to all of you. Thank you. I'll stick around for a little bit for any more questions or comments. And uh, we're getting a, a, <laughs> a request to smile for a picture. Not that we haven't had enough already. But thank you again. Uh, here's to a bet better 2021. And cheers to all of you. Thanks so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend.